Hello everyone and welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. Today on the table we have a special video for you. It's the finals of the 401 Store Championship 2017 held in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. On the left we have Kevin, friend of the channel. On the right we have Alfredo, another friend of the channel. Both sitting here in the finals. Both kicked ass in their top four games and here they are. Who will be the Store Championship winner for 401 games? in Toronto. We have Targaryen crossing on the left. Stark crossing on the right. Rush is a thing. And as we can see, it gets you to the final table in this case. A good answer to the location decks, the wall decks, the Night's Watch defensive decks is to rush, get as many challenges through, just get power faster than your opponent. Both decks doing a good job at that. And here they are. So we got Ricaro. A Targaryen Loyalist and a King's Road on the Targaryen side. We got a duped Rob Stark with a Bodyguard and a Winterfell Steward on the other side. Jeff who? No, <laughs> shit. <laughs> Both getting pretty good setups. But a duped Rob Stark with a Bodyguard is pretty good. Not real economy on the Stark side. And seeing a King's Road on the Targ side with a... Targaryen Loyalist Reducer is definitely going to be good for him trying to spread out wide on the Targaryen side. Uh, it's uh, looks like they've uh, decided on the plots, and here we go. We got Noble Cause into Time of Plenty. Oh, we tied actually. It was the number two. It was the number two. So Kevin letting us know he rolled a two on his uh, roll there. Funny guy, funny guy. And it looks like uh, Stark player won initiative and chose the Targaryen player to go first. Both players drawn three cards. The Targ player will have a two cost reduction on the first lord or lady he plays this round. Are we going to see Danny already? Are we going to see Cal Drogo? We're waiting for uh, Kevin to marshal here. Uh, if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button down below to be notified uh, when new videos go up hit the alarm button uh, alarm bell button sorry right beside that and uh, when we go live you'll get notifications and help support the channel hit that like button too while you're waiting here you marshal that rose road pops the king's road Neil's the targaryen loyalist gets the lady reduction spends a gold and we have an alt art daenerys targaryen on the board so while she is standing, the opponent's characters in challenge will be minus one strength. She also can be knelt for that dirty event. I know he's playing in the deck, Dracaris. And it looks like it's a Dothraki C he's playing there. Now we saw these two play earlier actually in the series. Uh, if you've been watching along, you can go back and see these two play. Should be in the playlist on the channel for this uh, store championship. You can see all the games. If you haven't watched them, you can see what happened up to this point. Well, we've actually already seen these two play off on camera. So it'd be interesting to see how it goes. Uh, last time it was Kevin on the left, the Targaryen player that won. Uh, spoiler. <laughs> if you haven't gone back and watched it, I guess. But, uh, will it go the same here? In a game where you're drawing six off a 60-card deck, lots of decision points. It could go anyway. No two games will ever be the same. Oh, yeah. So yeah, of course that Catelyn marshaled it on the Stark side, side with a dupe. Yeah, I think that's some milk on uh, Daenerys there. And yeah, it does look like it's a Dothraki C1 gold, unique, Essos traded. Reaction after you win a power challenge, sacrifice Dothraki C to put a Dothraki character into play from your hand. At the end of the phase, if that card is still in play, return it to your hand, cannot be saved. 
And we got Sansa Stark marshaled in from the Wolf of the North box. Caro, uh, that Blood Rider, uh, he's well. You control another Blood Rider character, he gains Intimidate. And reaction after a character is killed to satisfy claim during a challenge you initiated. Ricaro gains one power. I don't think he has to be in the challenge. As long as a character is killed to satisfy claim in a challenge you initiated, he gains one power. Pseudo renown. <laughs> Looks like three gold saving on Targaryen's side. Kevin assessing the board here. Deciding if he wants to do his challenges. Or just pass. Is this not talking alone? Oh, shut up. That's all for the Military. A dramatic military challenge here with uh, Ricaro. Three strength, minus one from Lord of the Crossing. This event is uh, Blood of My Blood. <laughs> it's challenge action. Search your deck for a Blood Rider character and put it into play. Shuffle your deck. At the end of the phase, if that card is still in play, return it to your hand. I think he declared no defenders. And now he brings out a little Dothraki Chud. So I guess there's a way for him to get Intimidate out of thin air. So he has to control another Blood Rider, which now he does. Yeah, it's a devoted Blood Rider. Each Blood Rider character you control gets plus one strength also. Won the challenge by four since it was unopposed. Is that Blood Rider character giving him an extra buff and gets to intimidate a four strength character, which is Catelyn Stark, goes down for the intimidate Neil. It looks like a bodyguard was uh, discarded for claim. And now we get a power challenge with uh, Daenerys Targaryen, five strength. And uh, Alfredo's going to read the uh, location and see what kind of trickery could happen from it. We've got to win the power challenge to trigger that Dothraki C. No Catelyn Stark to just go in and defend to stop the triggers. Both players playing slow and careful here. It is the finals. I apologize. I'm not editing out all the uh, thinking moments here. That would uh, take a little too long to go in and cut out all those spots. So looks like we have a full defense here with Sansa Stark and Rob Stark. Nine strength. Rob Stark gets a power. And I think that's it. No entry got come standing. Over to the Stark player as boards knelt. I gotta pitch one of these seconds. And it uh, looks like no one gets dominance. That uh, devoted Blood Rider goes back to the hand of the Tark player. And it sounds like he's chucking some cards for uh, for reserve. Oh, oh, I 
thought you were going off of Saka, and I don't know the perfect Saka would be. Uh, it's Fred. Let's keep everything So the Devoted here. Bloodrunner is who he discards for taxation, uh, uh, hitting his reserve. Don't mind them. Sure. So the start player choosing to play very defensive there that first round. Hold his ground. Not let, uh, not let the target player get too much. He's only, they're both sitting at one power right now. We have confiscation flipped into calling the banners. So Stark player is going to get three gold off the characters across the board, and I think Danny's going to lose that milk of the poppy. So the Stark player chooses the Targaryen player to go first. And yep, that milk of the poppy goes away. No other attachments in play actually. Target player has five gold to work with, plus a Targaryen loyalist. stand a blood rider character while there's a summer plot right now there is no summer plot Copy of Winterfell in play. Let's start clear. And uh, he gets a copy of Brand marshaled in there, kneeling the Winterfell steward to help reduce the cost. Stark character is plus one strength from Winterfell. Which definitely helps offset that punishment of uh, Lord of the Crossing there, reducing the first challenge characters by minus one strength. So it helps Bran get a little weenie challenge in there if he wants. So let's see how much the Targaryen character is going to commit here on challenges, try to get his agenda going. It's like no gold saved on the Targaryen side, so no fear of Dracarys. So with Bran out there and Catelyn Stark, that should help reduce that from happening. Should. It sounds like military challenge. Uh, they're each minus one uh, from the agenda. So six strength coming in here. So I think he's going for an intimidate play here. Kneel out a single character. Stop, <laughs> Oh yeah, 
that Daenerys is minus one strength was just nightmares. And it looks like uh, Rob Stark's coming in on the block. Six to six. So no intimidates happening. Claim is a Winterfell steward. Rob Stark is triggered. Stands the board, which is just Rob Stark. So two characters knelt to do that on the other side. Uh, but now everyone's standing on the Stark side. One by zero. That's what you want. <laughs> and yeah, I think what just happened there, Kevin forgot his uh, Recaro trigger on a Stark character getting killed. Forgot, forgot to give him a renown. I think we were looking funny at each other uh, uh, watching the game that he missed that and he looked over and caught us looking funny at each other and uh, thought we meant the intimidate but uh, yeah we were just looking because he forgot the renown I think what was happening there that's why he was making those comments to us at the side and then when I realized he was watching us at that point I stopped making any kind of reactions because I don't want to give anything away in the game here but yeah, there's a bunch of us around this table watching. The pressure was on. And it looks like power challenge, one strength, fully bo blocked by Bran Stark with his plus one bonus. Remember, Daenerys is blank right now from Nightmares, so no minus one strength. And all the Tark player has left now standing is uh, Daenerys. Possibly doing intrigue. Should we get the two strength buff? But it could still be fully defended across the board. And he might just let it go unopposed. And then hammer through three challenges. All getting unopposed on all of them. And the target player would not be looking too pretty after that. So he's just going to pass it up. And let's see what the uh, Stark player does here. So military challenge I think of five. No defenders. So we're now on Rob Stark. Now I know. Now I know the thing. And yeah, he just realized the Recaro ability now. So the Targaryen loyalist was claimed. Power challenge, five strength. Gatlin Stark, plus one from Winterfell. Daenerys is only five strength, so Ty will go to the attacker. And then uh, he could push through an intrigue challenge. And remember, uh, Sansa is actually minus one strength right now from that Stark character in the dead pile, the Winterfell steward. So claim of one. And now intrigue. Plus two strength because Lord of the Crossings. That's why you need to save Sansa for the third challenge. And it's going to be unopposed, claim, and gets Lord of the Crossing power. So the Stark player is shot up to six power, uh, to zero on the other side. Did you read it? So on to the next round here. Both players check the reserve. They are good. Yeah. The big story is here. The Stark player keeps winning initiative, forcing the Targaryen player to go first. He's committing offensively, but not getting much through, and then getting punished um, back by his opponent when he's on defense. Target player needs to start winning initiative here. So time of plenty into Wardens of the North. Both players drawing three cards off time of plenty. Of course, the Tark player is going first. Lost initiative again. He's 
that weird spot. But at least he has a summer plot now. He can use Ago to stand a Blood Rider, so he can get some extra use out of one of his characters. Maybe you'll see a copy of Rigal and maybe get some extra use out of Danny. He just needs to be able to do his challenges and still have enough to defend his opponent. Crossing versus crossing. He's falling behind on board presence. And there is Rigal. Speak of the devil. Rigal is out. So help Danny get extra actions and renown off of Drogon. Yeah, definitely having Rob Stark across the board, being able to stay on the board after killing someone is definitely super useful in a crossing deck. So lets him defend and come back with all three of his challenges. And speaking of Rob Stark, he's going to be able to stand around forever since he's now got all three copies on the board. And now he's got a heart tree grow yes, for Please. economy. In front of all your adoring fans, play yeah. fourth Rob. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> and Septim Bourdain out on the board. Giving Sansa Stark renown. And I, they want to say plus two strength, but I keep forgetting. I know Arya is an intrigue icon and immune to opponents' claw card effects, I believe. Let's find out here. Yeah, so, yep. Sansa Stark gets plus two, plus two strength and gains renown. That is great for crossing deck. That is great for having that Wards of the North out there. She can sneak into a challenge, get some extra power. And still three gold to spend. Afraid of taking this full here. He's got to be careful. Doesn't want to commit too much. But he has multiple dupes, so I don't think he needs to worry about the Valor. And we have Jane Westerling in play. Who can kneel to stand a Stark Lord or King, I believe. So another way to get extra use out of your characters with Renown, your bigger guys. Great for a crossing deck. Start crossing. Who would have knew? Who would have knew or known? Go over to the Targaryens for their challenges. Again, going first. Now he's got Rygla out there to stand Danny, but the problem is Danny's got to win that challenge she's in. And looking across the board, that's going to be a tough. Plus one strength on every character from Winterfell is basically canceling out Danny's ability while she's standing. Looks like Kevin's gonna go for it here on the Targ side. Try to keep pushing through challenges and get his agenda off. He's not gonna sit back and try to play defensive. And he does have a gold there. And a dragon standing. And Daenerys standing. So could we see a Dracarys play here? I mean, Bran Stark's out there. Oh, I guess it's protection against that. He's just going for the Intimidate play again. Danny's out there, minusing one strength. Cancelled out by Winterfell, so we don't need to worry about that. Caro. No strength buff on him. So it sounds like it's unopposed, actually. And I guess with Rob Stark's stand ability, he's okay with taking an Intimidate. Dupe off Rob Stark for claim. Oh, but I guess he has no way of sacking a character now on his side to use Rob Stark's ability, actually. And no character was killed there, so Ricard won't get to uh, 
trigger his renown ability. He's definitely been slowing down the Tark player. So Intimidate on Rob Stark. But remember, we got Jane Westerling out there. We can just kneel to stand him right back up. He might save uh, Ego's ability for the defense. Try to stand up Ricaro and maybe defend the challenge. Oh, he's going to do it right now, actually. So he stands Ricaro. Intrigue challenge for four. <laughs> oh, we might actually get Winterfell out here as a reaction to uh, stop any triggers. Cat and Stark could do the same. So we have Sansa coming in. Should be six strength, I believe. Yeah, defense with six. Right. I just want to make sure I'm right. Five, four, six, seven, six, five. Yep. Um, just six. Just six. Oh, it's actually five. Yeah, minus one from Danny. Still fully wins. Gets renown off Septa. Reno. Uh, will Danny be involved in a power challenge? Uh, Ricaro, Ricaro and Danny, that's uh, nine strength. Plus uh, two for each of them from uh, Lord of the Crossing. Bringing it up to uh, 13. Then while Danny's down, that lets Winterfell give a plus one buff. And it's no longer canceling each other out. Jeez, four and Catelyn. And remember, Jane Westling will probably go down to stand Rob if he wants to block this power challenge. And then you also have Bran in there for an extra two. That's four, five. So another 6, 11, 12, 13. Hmm. Power. Actually, it's just going to be Ricaro coming in. Six strength power challenge. <laughs> and he's going to Neil Winterfell to stop any Dracara shenanigans. Or triggering the Dothraki Sea, actually, too. Or any superior claims. Or any other tricks off winning a power challenge. So Alfredo might just let it go through here. He's just going to block with one from Bran Stark. So crossing and claim gets two more power. And we got Intimidate on Ricaro, kneeling Jane Westerling. So that's actually going to stop Jane from standing Rob Stark. And that's not a bad turn for the Tark player. Prevents uh, all three challenges from the Stark player. That was not too bad. Very, very careful, but did a good job, I think. So power challenge. Yeah, three strength, I believe, off Catelyn. Minus one from Crossing, minus one from Danny, and then plus one from Winterfell. No fear of Dracarys. And she's participating. Not enough gold on the Tark side to Nightmares and Dracarys. 
I guess you can't even play Nightmares at this point. Would have happened. Would have had to be before. Oh no! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because I was scared, it didn't mean I jump into it. <laughs> All right. Chris. So unopposing claim, two power. In by the Stark player. Then goes the dominance. And dominance goes to the Targ player. So that's not a bad turn with the Targ player going first. He finally was able to handle the Stark player and not take too much of a beating on the defense. So we got Winter Festival on both sides, and they give each other a high five for matching plots. We're both going to get uh, two power off the plots at the end of the challenge phase. Don't rub it in. Oh, okay. Very popular deck, a uh, very popular plot, sorry, in a rush deck, I would assume. Just need that extra power, try to close out the game faster, Let's get it wherever you can. The target player actually winning initiative here due to having less power and a tie on initiative. Chooses the Stark player to go first. Let's see how this goes with Alfredo the Stark player going first for once here. And remember, he can go a little, uh, a little silly and overcommit and then prevent the uh, target player from doing a military. He'd probably have to save his military as last. The Stark player would kill somebody and then just stand this whole board with Rob Stark, so gotta gotta be careful there. Yeah. <laughs> How dare you say that? Yeah, we were just talking on the sidelines there. We were making jokes about how we thought it would be a quick game, both being crossing rush decks. Uh, but we were completely wrong. Both players playing very smart and very careful. Taking their time. Doing each decision. Not rushing it. And we got Jory Cassell. Marshaled out on the Stark side. He can uh, be sacrificed to save a Stark character from dying. I believe it's like if there's a winter plot out, they get in power or some business. Oh, you played that as well? No, 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 I didn't. I just played that. Uh, but in your hand is five, huh? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, okay. Sorry, check. That's okay. Trying to make your approval. Yeah, then if there's a winner block card revealed, that character gains one power. <laughs> Whoever Jory saved. There's a good little combo in this little rush deck. Another way to get power. Another way to get power. Kind of funny. So, Jory Cassell, two gold saved. Over to the Targ player for marshalling. And he gets Sir Barristan Selmy out on the board. With a duplicate. And sits on a gold. Also got a Rose Road Marshal out there, looks like it. So, Sir Barristan, we don't see him in much, uh, in many decks. Five strength, military power, four, or four strength, sorry, five cost, military power. Unique, he's a knight. Reaction after you win a challenge in which Sir Barristan Selmy is participating. If you have fewer cards in hand than the losing opponent, stand him. That's a good, uh, good trick for uh, crossing to help get extra use out of characters. <laughs> Looks like Jory's knelt there, probably doing a military challenge. Probably saving that power challenge for later. It's the one you want to push through to close it out, so you save that one until later when you get all the buff from the Lord of the Crossing on the third challenge. Make sure you steal power from your opponent, get the bonus from Lord of the Crossing, and hopefully get some renowns across the board. 
Five power away for the start player. Could he close it out here? So we actually have uh, Drogon Nelt for Drakaris. On Jory. I'm sure Bran will be sacked. Or Jory can just die or sacrifice, sacrifice himself to save himself. And Bran's actually going to be sacked. And Rob Stark's going to be triggered to stand Jory. So the target player can still declare defenders uh, if he wants to block the challenge, I guess. It's for three, right? Yeah, three strength it was. Got to be careful letting it go unopposed. Uh, would we'll just feed that Stark player. Is very, very close winning. Five power away. Two coming in at the end of the plot phase. Or at the end of the, sorry, the challenge phase from the power on his plot. That's what I meant to say. Got Renown and Rob Stark. Renown on Sansa. Jory's little tricky ability. I guess it wouldn't be triggered anymore. Or no, it could be, yeah, sorry, it could be on the military challenge coming back at him. Looks like Ego will defend with four. No summer plot out, so Ego can't use his ability to stand a Blood Rider. Strength Intrigue Challenge with Septa Mordain. No gold left for Jakaris. May I? Uh, okay. No, it's popped out of my head. Uh, down, down. Yeah, Kevin's just running through the power that could be won here on the next challenge with crossing Renown's claim. Who he's got to save back to oppose it. Realizes the game is very close to being won by the Stark player. Doesn't want to commit too much. He needs to still do his challenges back. So maybe he can steal some power and maybe, you know, try to catch up. But right now the target player is just sitting at three. So looks like we got a block with Danny. So Danny will stand from Regal, get renowned from Drogon, and should draw for insight. But maybe he doesn't want to draw for insight because of Barristan. I think he needs to have fewer, what did I say? Fewer cards or more cards? I can't remember already. Uh, he needs fewer. So he needs fewer. So maybe that's why he's not triggering the insight off Danny. Power challenge, 18 strength, Alfredo's saying. He will get crossing, claim, power on Sansa, power on Rob. That's four power. That technically leaves him three away. He'll get Winterfell or Winter Festival. But the Targ player still has to go for his challenges, so. We will see. Might have another round to play here. And it looks like he's going to block the unopposed with uh, Barristan. Crossing claim. And renown, renown. So three power away from winning for the Stark player. 
And over to the Targ player for his challenges. He's sitting at three power. He's got one on Daenerys and two on the on the house card. So it sounds like an entry challenge with Rygal, minus one strength. From Lord of the Crossing, so it should be two. Danny standing, so the characters cross the border minus one, but they're also plus one from Winterfell. It's not enough with Jane Westerling to block. It's actually gonna go unopposed. I think Alfredo's trying to win dominance too here. Arya's gift on the entry challenge. I know. <laughs> so Tark player at four strength or four power, sorry. Uh, the Stark player is sitting at twelve. Give me action. Nope. I think he's trying to stop the power challenge. Military challenge, he just saves with Jory Cassell, gets the power he needs. Put him back on the character he saves because there's a winter plot revealed. He has Dominus, he could possibly win to get a power there. He's got two coming from Winter Festival. He's very close to winning here, very, very close. Pass challenges, do you have any interrupts? Uh, so that's it for challenges. They both get their. Uh, Winter Festival, two power each. If you want to count yourself, I have nine. <laughs> I have my and dominance, I think nobody gets dominance. Replicates are pretty good. So the Stark player is one power away from winning. The Targ player is nine power away from winning. No Valar Morgulis, which uh, I thought might have happened just out of. Uh, Desperation to shake this thing up, but uh, I don't know if either player is running it. So Summer Harvest and uh, Fallen from Favor. So a character will be sacked and it'll be Jane Westerling. <laughs> Lots of money coming for the uh, Targaryen player. Hitting that seven gold plot across the table. Jeff's not opposing. So Stark player wins initiative. He just chooses to go first. He is looking to ram a giant power challenge down the throat of his opponent and close it out. So Summer comes. What's that? Uh, she's going to grab a Bran and send it back to hand. You'll probably see Bran marshaled right out here. Yep, that makes sense. A little insurance, some protection. Three spent on Osha. It's great in a crossing deck, sneaking in on challenges and just sneaking right back out and then using her again. So Kevin, <laughs> Kevin's funny, he's dropping his gold, he's frustrated, he knows it's over, he doesn't know what he can do. He's kind of uh, giving up in his actions here. And there's, uh, what's his face? The Ceres Targaryen, and he's passing, so much gold saved. Maybe just drawn into garbage. Maybe it's all of his event tricks on the power challenges that he's not winning. That he's drawing into his Sharika require however you say that stupid event, his his superior claims. He's sitting on Dracaris as he's not using I don't know. So we got Summer coming in on the military. Two string. Got him one. 
Is that fewer than five? Yes. Yeah, I think he's got more cards in hand, too, so he can't do the bear's stun ability. Why do you think I'm a loser? So, block with Drogon. Fully defended. Intrigue challenge with Osha. Two strength. So Danny can fully block that and then just stand off Rygal. Rygal can fully block, actually. It's going to be Danny. Osha's going to jump out of the challenge. So Rygal will stand Danny. Danny should get Renown. And he's going to draw the insight. Looking for the card to help win the game. And power challenge all in. And, yeah, I don't know... Uh, don't know what uh, is going to happen here. So it's, I think it's over. I don't see how Kevin can defend fully. No tricks. Catelyn Stark's in the challenge. So it sounds like 26 on the power challenge. And Viserys Targaryen will block for one. And Kevin shakes it up. And that's it. Yeah, look, superior claims everywhere and those Shariq events or whatever they're called. So all the tricks off winning power challenges, but if you don't win the power challenges, they do nothing for you. So Alfredo played very well. Congrats to Alfredo. Did an awesome job in the tournament. You can go back and see all his games in this tournament. Played very well. And uh, he's now the champion for 2017 Four One Games. And thank you to all who support on patreon.com forward slash Rob's Gaming Table. If you want to donate, you can do so by clicking the link below. Or just click the like button, comment, subscribe. Any of those things are awesome. You guys are all awesome for just watching these videos. We got more store championship videos coming up. So make sure you subscribe. And we'll see you in the next one, guys. Thanks a lot.